Oh, marine, marine mammals. Uh, no, they don't. They're going to be diving for short periods. Short may be up to an hour in, in some of the big whales. But then they're coming back up. So they're, they're not really, they don't adjust their overall, they don't have a gas bladder at all. Uh, some, I'm just thinking of the manatees, uh, manatees actually increase their density compared to their relatives so that they can sink to the bottom. And then it takes them energy to go back up. I don't think the whales, to my knowledge, have any adaptation as far as buoyancy goes. What, did, uh, what were some of the mechanisms that like prehistoric fishies because they have so much bone compartments that made them weigh? Can't tell you. No, I mean, I mean, that's a good question. So if you look at the astrocoderms, uh, I, I guess that's what you're referring to, or even the placoderms, well, all of that bone around the outside that made them very dense uh, animals. Um, I don't know if they, many of them were bottom dwellers. I don't know. That's a good question. Is it possible that there is a, a facility of water with iron that, that increased the density? That's, that's possible because salinity does, salinity does change. Uh, <laughs> we would have to see how, uh, whether the glaciers had melted at that time because if, if you're in a warm period and there's less water in the glaciers, uh, there's more water in the ocean, which means that it would be less dense uh, if you're in the ocean. If you're in a glacial period, more water's locked up, so the seawater would be more dense. Um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of factors could come into play. What happens when you take these fish out of water? Is that like, it for them because when it's their, their gas bladder like over expand, they can't really does it overexpand? I've never heard of that happening, so that would indicate that they should be able to make an automatic and rapid adjustment, decreasing the amount of air in that bladder. Oh, go ahead, sorry. That's interesting. But I'm just tossing around something in my brain, too, about of bringing up deep sea fishes. And there's something about the rapid decrease in pressure that will screw up their bodies. And maybe that's what's going on, is those that have the, uh, the gas bladder. So do all the actinopterygii have gas You know, there are so many actinopterygii that I'll, I, I'll guarantee you there's somebody out there that no longer has it. But probably 95% of them do have so it's a very, very common feature of that region. When you're talking about the red body, you said that was acidic, right? Correct. So the pH is going to go up. Yeah. yeah. You said up. Oh, all right. I, well, I'm looking at my scale. One is up here. Fourteen's down there. All right. So we're going to have a smaller number. We're going to have it more acidic. Sorry if I confused everyone. Yeah. I'm a little confused. So the red body, does it, it gets more acidic, or in a more acidic environment, the red body um, releases more oxygen. So is the actual acidity of the red body changing? So the cells in the red body, instead of constantly uh, getting all of their ATPs through aerobic respiration, they operate anaerobically. So when the blood comes into that restricted area, it is encountering a more acidic environment. That acidic environment is what causes the hemoglobin then to let go of the So the, the red body is actually a different acidity? Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah, the reti and the oval body, by the way, these are going to be found in our physoclistus animals. The physostomus animals don't need it. That's because they can just burp out the air if they have too much or they can gulp air in if they need more. Anyway, so they, they can do their adjusting that way. Um, I think that's what I wanted to do on gas bladders. Okay. All right, so we're going to continue to look at various things that are uh, pertinent to fish. So 
We're going to look at uh, a little bit at swimming. Uh, later on, we're going to look at respiration. If we have time, we might get into reproduction. Then we'll move on and, and talk about amphibians. So what I want to cover uh, today, or start today, is some things about swimming. How these animals are actually moving around in their watery environment. And we got our backbone right there. Fish, as we already talked about, are going to move um, primarily by having lateral bending of the body. Okay? We said that the, the fins most typically are going to be used for stability and maneuverability. Well, the trunk muscles that are going to cause this lateral bending actually are segmented from the front to the back of the animal. Each segment is called a myomere. These myomeres in fishes have complex shapes, so it's not just, you know, this from front to back. Instead, you might see something like this. A W shape is very common the animals. It's very complex and it's even more complex if you see it in, in three dimensions. So we have multiples of these all up and down the animal. They're segmented. So lots of these W-shaped myomeres from the front to the back. The complex shape and the fact that it spans, each of them spans multiple vertebrae, gives the animal a certain amount of fine control over the movements. So you have multiple myomeres, multiple segments that are operating to bend the vertebral column at any single point. Right? Those multiple, the involvement of multiple segments, multiple myomeres, gives you better fine control over the movement of that segment. Okay. So we're going to use these trunk muscles. They're in myomeres. By the way, uh, just to show you a little bit on myomeres, hand dag number nine on that group. Okay, hand out number nine on the lecture group. Just shows you uh, two-dimensional aspects of the myomeres, how they appear at the surface of various fishes. And then to the right in that diagram, they extract one of the myomeres and with stippling try to indicate the complex three-dimensional shape. So that's all that I'm trying to get across with that particular handout. You can see that in something like Amphioxus, which is a lower chordate, it's a simple structure. Lampreys are not that complex. But as you go from the sharks and then into the bony fishes, we're getting a much more uh, complex shape to that myomere. Okay, when a fish swims, let's say this is our fish, and we're looking down on the fish. We could make things simple, and we will, and watch that fish as it swims. And if we did that, we're going to see that we're going to get lateral movement of the trunk. We're going to go up, we're going to come back, go up, come back. That bending movement of the body is going to provide the force that actually drives the animal forward. Okay, well how can that happen? As the animal is going to bend its tail in that direction. It's going to exert a force on the water. What does Newton's third law say? 
forces. Equal and opposite forces. So if the fish is exerting a force A on the water, the water is exerting a similar force on the fish, but in the opposite direction, A prime. Thinking back to your physics, you can take that, look at that as a force vector, and you can resolve that into its component vectors. So there will be a component there, and there will be a component in that direction. Now my drawing is not to scale, but this is the one that's very important. That component of the force vector is in the forward direction. That means we are going to get thrust, pushing that animal forward, even though it's doing that with its tail. Pushes against the water with force A, an equal and opposite force is pushing against the fish's body. We could resolve that into a forward component and a lateral component. The forward component is the thrust that drives the animal through the water. You're always going to have a lateral component. That is usually smaller than the thrust. I know I drew it that way. I can't draw on the board immediately the way I need to sometimes. There's always a lateral component. That's wasted energy. So if you ever see photographs of fish and they're coming right at the camera, if you watch them, they're not coming straight at you. Instead, they're like that. But that's because there is this lateral component. So it is wasted energy, but it's something that's unavoidable um, in these fish. All right. That forward thrust is going to be opposed by a force called drag. So in order for the animal to move forward, it has to create more thrust than the drag. 